Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and behind me is a Ford Ranger EV. This was a factory built by Ford electric truck from 1998. It originally ran on lead acid batteries. Uh, as it's configured right now, it's also running on lead acid batteries, but I'll show you in a bit, not in the original configuration. So um, I just got this. I don't have the title license insurance taken care of yet, so I don't, I can't take it out on the road and tell you what the real range is or anything like that yet. But for the moment, uh, let's do a walk around, do an overview, take a look at this truck. So here it is. Uh, it is a standard cab, regular bed. Um, it's a little high. Apparently this was built on the four-wheel drive version of the Ford Ranger, although it is in fact a two-wheel drive electric. Right up here uh, is where you do the charging. Plug in right here. Um, overall, the body is relatively good although it's got like a lot of little paint marks and some little dings but for a 20 year old truck it's really not that bad um coming over to this side there's actually kind of a heavier ding back here and there's a lot of little paint scratches that when i take photos you can't see these at all but in real life i go oh man there's a lot of scratches on this side uh the other side does look better um it looks like this was used in uh, Atlanta, Georgia at the Centennial Olympic Park. If you'll remember the Summer Olympics in 1996, uh, we're in Atlanta and this was a 1998 model year truck. Of course, it's badged electric. It's got alloy wheels on here, which look pretty good. Uh, in the back, it's got a tonneau cover. Tailgate's got a bit of a ding in it. Uh, of course, it does come with... Uh, with its own bumper stickers. Uh, it does have a towing package on it. It has an aftermarket Reese two inch hitch. And if we really get down here, we can see um, kind of a weird rear axle. This is a kind of a specialty thing to learn more about this. Uh, look in the, the description of the video. I'll have a link to more about how this works, but it's a straight axle and separate from that are two drive axles from the electric motor to the gear reduction to the wheels. You can see one of the half axles right back there. Um, it's actually pretty hard to really see the electric motor in this truck. It's sort of tucked away. It's, it's kind of tough to, to see uh, the main part of everything under here, but right there, that's one of the drive axles. Um, Interestingly enough, this kind of weird rear suspension is actually the same style that's used on the Mitsubishi iMeve. So I actually have two rear motor, rear drive electric vehicles with that same uh, kind of suspension. Go figure. Um, underneath is the battery box. And right here is a bunch of weird cords which should not be there. And again, we'll show you why that is in a couple of minutes. Uh, but all down the middle, this is uh, what some people call the coffin or the sarcophagus. It's this big, long battery box running down the, the middle of this whole thing. And the truck ride height itself is up just a little high. And I'm sure that was to originally make clearance for this battery box. Uh, to me, it's just a little higher. It's a little harder to get in and out of than on my Chevy S10. Um, but if we take a look on the inside here, the interior of the truck is actually pretty clean. I mean, considering it's a 20 year old truck, there's a little bit of yellowing on some of the plastics, but the seats actually look like they're in really good condition. There's just a little tearing, um, especially on the driver's side over here, but the, the cloth actually looks pretty good. It, it looks like a pretty decent interior. Officially, it's actually a three-seater. There's a little seat belt here, so I might be able to cram my still pretty young daughter in here for going out camping and pulling a camping trailer with this thing. The controls are pretty straightforward. Uh, very basic traditional truck controls, AM, FM tuner, radio, uh, heat and air conditioning, although again, basic. Uh, interestingly, it has two 12-volt plugs. Uh, which was funny because I was playing with the uh, radio and I adjusted the volume. And then I went to adjust the tuning. Couldn't figure out why I couldn't change the station because that's the 12 volt plug. But <laughs> I swear it it matches the uh, 
knob for the radio here. Um, actually, up on the dashboard, the truck has about 20,000 miles on it. Um, the instrument cluster is a little bit different than a standard Ford Ranger, but not by a whole lot. It's just got a couple little things different on it. Um, it shifts like an automatic transmission, although the, uh, the actual little pointer is a little bit off. It, for whatever reason, that somehow got misaligned. Um, and if we look, the lowest gear is E. That's the economy mode with uh, regenerative braking. Uh, my daughter thought the, the coolest part of the whole thing was these. She said, oh, wow, it's like in Grandpa's truck. Because she otherwise has not grown up with cars that have cranked down handles like that on them. One other thing on here that I found was kind of interesting is the hood. It is a aluminum hood. Uh, right here I've got my magnetic parts tray. And that's going to stick right to the fender because that's made out of steel. But if I put that on the hood, that's definitely non-metallic. This is a aluminum hood. So I'm going to try not to... Uh, bend it up. I guess, uh, you know, some of the Tesla folks have actually had problems with uh, denting the hood right up here when they, they push to close it. But let's uh, pop the hood, take a look underneath here. I gotta say that overall under the hood looks very clean. Uh, for a truck of this age in this part of the country, this is, this is just fantastic. Um, you know, here's kind of some of our main parts, obviously everything high voltage. Uh, uses the orange conduit, but there's only just a very minimum amount of corrosion on any of the aluminum parts. Overall, the steel painted parts look uh, look very good. I mean, like right up here, the paint looks brand new. Uh, factory green paint job on there, which I thought was unusual because I, I thought all of the, uh, the Ford Ranger EVs were for uh, essentially fleets and they were white because of that, but apparently not all of them. Uh, some things are, are pretty recognizable, you know, your typical old truck blower fan and washer fluid and, and things like that. And then some of them you go, wow, that's some big power electronics in there. So it's got the battery charger, DC to DC converter, stuff like that up here. Um, it has a electric air conditioning compressor. And overall, it looks pretty good under the hood. Nice big brake booster. Okay, so this gets a little bit interesting. Remember, this thing has a tonneau cover on it. Uh, mostly it's pretty good, except for a little bit of tearing over here. And it kind of hooks onto this track, so I'll see if I can undo a corner one-handed. If not, I'll just stop the camera. Okay, with the tonneau cover up, Here's the interesting part. Here's the mad science uh, portion of all of this. This is um, 26 12 volt lead acid batteries in the bed, making that center of gravity uh, high into the back of, of what it should be. Um, I mean, it's properly wired. It has the right voltage. The truck works and everything, but all those orange cables, which we saw going down from inside the battery pack, actually come back to here to a bunch of resistors in a box and that apparently is for tricking um, some of the, the sensors of the system because this originally would have used 8 volt batteries and instead right here it's using 12 volt batteries. Um, so what's going to have to happen is all these are going to come out and we'll find some lithium batteries and we'll install those in the proper battery box down low inside the truck. So this truck definitely has some possibilities to it. Um, in the one short little test drive that I've been able to do so far, it, it works great. You hop in and it drives. Um, but I want to upgrade the batteries to lithium. Don't know where those are coming from yet. Don't know where the budget for that is coming from yet. Another possibility would actually be adding Chatamo DC fast charging. Uh, here's something else, you know, since we're charging up in the front here, that means that the original gas cap, uh, what's under there? Nothing, which uh, might actually be a great place for a DC fast charger, because uh, since we're going to have to mess with the batteries anyways, and I have a DC fast charge port off of a old Mitsubishi iNeve electric car that was flood damaged. Um, 
it might be possible we might be able to do that um, in the meantime I have to get this titled and registered so that I legally can take it out on the roads and be able to do a test drive uh, check how far it can go per charge on the existing lead acid batteries um, one other thing I might like to do is again down at this uh, charging port uh, this is not J1772, it's an older standard. Um, it's the Avcon connector. So I think what I'd like to do uh, is build an adapter so I can keep this stock, keep it classic, um, but have an adapter so that I can use uh, the regular modern out and about, about uh, public charging stations with the modern J1772 standard on it. So I hope you're excited about this the way that I am. I'll keep you updated. And until next time, stay charged up.